The Light Me Fantasy 3 TV backlight really adds to your TV experience, and in this video I'm going to give you the reasons why you want this one. But if you're using Home Assistant, it can also double as a valuable presence sensor, which can help you automate the boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs, my name is Jeff. First off, LightMe did send the Fantasy 3 to me in exchange for a short film showing it off to you. They're not paying me to do this video, and they aren't telling me what I need to say. But as you might be aware, this is not the typical product I review on this channel, because it's not technically what I would consider smart home tech. That said, I want to make something clear. The claim I made in the opening about this being a valuable presence sensor is all mine. LightMe is not implying that at all, in any way. What LightMe is implying is that the Fantasy 3 is a fantastic TV backlight that can completely transform your TV watching experience. And that is completely accurate. The LightMe Fantasy 3 provides backlighting to your TV that's synced with the content you're watching. The kit comes with a sync box that has four HDMI inputs and one HDMI output, and it supports up to 8K resolution, giving you 8K resolution at 60Hz or 4K resolution at 120Hz. You also get an HDMI cable for connecting the sync box to your TV, a power adapter, and an LED strip equipped with 72 LEDs per meter that attaches to the back of your TV, ensuring the colors of your content really stand out. The HDMI box allows the LightMe Fantasy 3 to accurately represent the color of your content from corner to corner, which can help fully immerse you in whatever content you like to enjoy. LightMe offers different versions of the Fantasy 3 based on the size of your TV, which is to ensure that you get an LED strip that perfectly fits your TV. So make sure you select the right size for your TV. Setup for the LightMe Fantasy 3 is pretty simple, and it only took me about 20 minutes. Most of the setup time was spent getting the LED strip attached to the back of the TV. You may not even need to have to move your TV from its current place if you can reach the edge of your TV, because you'll want this strip placed close to the edge of your TV. I suggest starting from the end of the LED strip that connects to the sync box. Which side of the TV you start on is up to you. You'll have an opportunity to configure the orientation in the app. But you'll want to start at the bottom to ensure that that pigtail can reach the sync box and then press it to the back of your TV. If you have someone helping, they can hold the strip up to take the weight off, which will make this part easier. I had an audience, so I just dropped the strip over the top of the TV, which did the job. Once the first side is on, the rest goes pretty quick. The adhesive on the strip was plenty strong for the job, although I did find that the ends of the strip didn't want to stick as well as the rest. But these handy little things can help hold those ends down. I added some in the corners to ensure that any of my loops from these joint sections didn't stick up over the top of the TV. After that, connect the strip to your sync box, connect your HDMI sources, connect the output of the sync box to your TV, and plug it in to power. Like I mentioned, the LightMe Fantasy 3 has four HDMI inputs and one output. So if you have a lot of sources, this can help combine them all into one HDMI cable going to your TV. In my setup though, I have everything going through my Sony AV receiver. So I only have one source to connect to the sync box. This may be the source of some of my issues I had with the Fantasy 3, which I'll talk about in just a bit. First, let's get this thing configured and calibrated. This is a Tuya based device, which means you can use the LightMe app or the Tuya app to get this device connected to your smart home. If you're using Home Assistant, I suggest the Tuya app because it allows you to easily connect this to Home Assistant using the Tuya or the local Tuya integration. But if you're not using Home Assistant, the app you choose doesn't really matter. Both apps give you the exact same functionality, which is honestly not something I've seen in other apps built on the Tuya platform. So I applaud LightMe for that. Getting the Fantasy 3 connected to the app is the same process we're all familiar with, and it pairs really fast. After that, we only need to do a couple of things. First, head to the three dots and choose Setup Side. This image is facing the TV, so keep that in mind. Choose the one that represents where the pigtail is located on your TV. This ensures the device knows how the strip is oriented, which will ensure that the colors match your content. 
After that, you'll want to turn on the TV synchronization. This allows the Fantasy 3 to turn on and off based on your media sources, which really comes in handy. This, of course, doesn't work with all TVs, and from my time with this kit, it appears to be an issue with some sources. Although, as I mentioned earlier, I have everything going through my AV receiver, so that adds a variable that might be part of the issue. But once all of this is done, when you turn on your TV, the Fantasy 3 should turn on. And when you're done watching your content and turn the TV off, the Fantasy 3 should turn off as well. Like I said, my setup might be interfering with some of the Fantasy 3 functionality, but one thing it doesn't interfere with is the color, which is absolutely amazing. Prior to setting the Fantasy 3 up, I was using a different product that relied on a camera, and the difference is night and day. Actually, the Fantasy 3 works flawlessly whether it's night or day, whereas the camera-based system was heavily influenced by the light in the room. Not that that's a surprise, just pointing out that the sync box approach is worth the price if you're looking at saving some money and going with a camera-based system. To get the best experience, LightMe suggests having your TV 5 to 10 centimeters from the wall. The unit does appear to flicker when sources change or any time the screen goes black, and this is probably to be expected since the strip cannot display black. So just keep that in mind. I'm also using a universal remote that gives me one button to turn on my various devices. And most of the time, the Fantasy 3 turns on when I switch my system over to the PS5 or the Apple TV. But on occasion, I run into a situation where turning on the TV and switching to the Apple TV as the source, the Fantasy 3 turns on and then turns off before the Apple TV has come on screen. At this point, I have to manually turn the Fantasy 3 back on. If I switch from the PS5 to the Apple TV, it works every time. Again, I think this is something to do in my setup and not a flaw of the Fantasy 3. But since I have Home Assistant, it's not even that big of a deal. The Fantasy 3 is not something I would typically worry about getting into Home Assistant, since the automation is tied to the TV and that's what we want. But in this case, I think adding it to Home Assistant gives me a way to fix some of the weirdness I see in my home theater setup. And if you have a TV or source that isn't compatible with TV synchronization functionality, and you have Home Assistant, you can use Home Assistant to handle that automation for you. The first step is, of course, getting the Fantasy 3 added to Home Assistant. And if you use the Tuya app during the setup process, then you have two options. First, you can use the official Tuya integration, which just connects to the Tuya cloud and integrates those devices with Home Assistant. Or you can use the local Tuya integration from the Home Assistant community store that provides a local connection to these devices. Local Tuya does require a local key, which you have to get from the Tuya IoT API. And if you don't already have that set up, it's a bit more involved to get everything set up. I have some previous videos walking you through getting a device connected to local to you, so I won't go through all of that here. I will work on getting a written guide up over on slacker-labs.com. But in any case, once you have the Fantasy 3 in Home Assistant, then we just need to create an automation. I already have one called Bias Lighting that automatically dims the lights in my theater area when the Apple TV starts playing. So I added an option in my Choose action that when the Apple TV goes to idle, if the Fantasy 3 is not on, then turn it on. And the problem with it sometimes turning off when I switch to the Apple TV is solved. Which again, if the TV synchronization doesn't work for your setup, then you can also do an automation like this to handle it for you. But I also mentioned presence detection as something we can use the Fantasy 3 for, even though it's not actually a feature. Knowing when a room is occupied is one of those critical pieces of context that you need if you want your smart home to be, well, smart. And detecting room presence accurately is really hard. We have millimeter wave tech helping provide solutions, but not everyone wants that in their homes. And typical motion sensors are a bad option in a space where people sit relatively still for long periods. So in cases like this, I like to use other context in the room, especially if that context is tied to human behavior. And it just so happens any room with a TV has got the perfect presence detector. Unless you have a house with kids, of course. But the TV being on is typically the signal that trumps all other room presence signals. And since we can integrate the Fantasy 3 with Home Assistant, the Fantasy 3 can be the room presence signal you don't have. 
I think the Fantasy 3 is a fantastic piece of hardware, but with that said, there are some things I would like to see done differently. First, no doubt this device has power requirements that exceed what a USB port on a TV could provide. But it does have a USB port, and I'm not really sure what that port is meant for or what it's used for, but it would be nice to connect that USB port to the TV's USB port and have that be the signal of when the TV's on and off. I think that might be a little more accurate than the TV synchronization functionality. But in my tests, that didn't work. I also think it would be nice to have an IR sensor on this box that could be used to turn it on and off. And while the functionality to connect this device to Amazon or Google gives you a way to use your voice to turn it on and off in cases where it doesn't sync properly, that just feels cumbersome to me, especially since I'm most likely already using a remote. Being able to add turning this box on and off to the actions of my programmable remote would be an awesome feature. But really, those are my biggest complaints. I like that it comes with four HDMI inputs. That should cover most TV setups these days. And if you're currently using an HDMI switch box because your TV doesn't have enough, you could replace it with the LightMe Fantasy 3 and get the ability to add four HDMI sources to your TV. Plus, get some really cool backlighting. The responsiveness is impressive. And the sync box, while more expensive, is definitely worth it over the cheaper camera models. And LightMe also sells some light bars that can be used to extend the color beyond your TV, so you can really fill up your room. For anyone that wants to grab one of these, you can use the coupon code in the description of this video for a discount, which also helps support this channel. If you currently don't have your TV integrated with Home Assistant, I think the Fantasy 3 is a perfect way to add both a really nice visual experience to your TV, as well as getting the added benefit of something that could be used as the context of a room presence sensor. Like me says, this works with SmartThings, Amazon, and Google. So if you're using one of those as your smart home platform, you're going to be able to integrate these lights with those platforms. And if you're a fan of voice controls using Amazon or Google, you definitely have that option. And I really think the only people that wouldn't benefit from the LightMe Fantasy 3 are those that already have a Fantasy 3. All in all, it's turned out to be a fantastic addition to my smart home, despite not really being smart home tech. Anyway, a massive thanks to LightMe for allowing me to show you what you can do with their tech. So hopefully you have a better understanding of how it can help you automate the boring stuff. Thank you.